Exactly one week until Georgia's midterm primary election, more than 400,000 people have already voted. Record numbers for early voting in a primary. Joining me right now is NBC News political director Chuck Todd. Chuck, the early voting numbers here are up big time, 150% compared to the primary two years ago and up 200% from 2018. Why do you think this primary seems to be capturing the interest and attention of our voters more than any other recent vote? Well, I think uh, all the attention, look, number one, there's nothing like becoming where all the voters realize their vote counts and you're a battleground state. And Georgia, I think the fact that Georgia uh, appeared to deliver the presidency and control of the U.S. Senate. Mm. And the point being, I think more voters realize, oh my goodness, my vote counts. So that, number one. Number two, I think the reason you're seeing a bigger early vote is you had more people vote early before because of the pandemic. Frankly, people like the convenience. And as we've seen anywhere in the country where it's been introduced, it only seems to grow in use. Excellent points. And at the top of the ballot statewide is the governor's race. We have Stacey Abrams. She has no opposition on the Democratic side. But Republican Governor Brian Kemp has four challengers, including former Senator David Perdue. Now, despite name recognition and an endorsement from former President Trump, Purdue's campaign never really picked up steam. So is it too early to say that Trump's Midas effect, at least in this race, may be dwindling? The fact is, Trumpism is still very popular and very strong in the Republican Party. But I think sort of, it, 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 it really is race dependent and it's candidate dependent here. And I think that David Perdue's is much to blame for the inability of his campaign to take off as Donald Trump was. Look, Donald Trump talked Purdue into this race. It's pretty clear, mm -hmm. right? Purdue was looking at running in the Senate and then he decided not to. And then Donald Trump was frustrated. He couldn't get anybody to challenge Kemp. And then he talked David Purdue into doing it late. But you can, then the reason it's pretty obvious, not only does a reporting support the fact that he talked, to him, talked him into it, but just look at the campaign Purdue has run. He doesn't really have a rationale for why he wants to be governor. He has a rationale for why he wants to unseat Kemp, and it's really the, the, the beef that, that Trump has with Kemp. But, you know, what are you going to do differently as governor? And, you know, it's so hard to knock off an incumbent governor. I think the hardest thing to do besides knocking off an incumbent president in a primary is knocking off an incumbent governor. does not happen very often. Some can get dragged into runoffs. We're going to see that in Alabama. But I don't even think Kemp's going to end up in a runoff here. Uh, and it's just as a reminder that if you don't have a, you gotta, you gotta make a case for why the other person should be fired, and and it can't really be something about the past, right? Mm. You gotta have the grievances gotta sort of matter in the everyday lives of people, and I think that's the the missing piece here for Purdue. Chuck, thank you so you much it. for joining us. We appreciate it.